Good morning and welcome to Tailored Talent Thanksgiving edition. I'm Eric Walzakowski, the host of Tailored Talent, here with the show's mastermind, Adam Boone, better known as Boone. Boone, welcome to Tailored Talent. Thanks, Eric. It's uh, awesome to be here and join you. I appreciate you joining. And then, of course, here today, we're here to talk about our Q3 talent report, which really featured two elements. One was the overall talent market, and two was the rise of the chief people officer. Today, we'll be talking about the rise of the chief people officer, which really is near and dear to our heart. And can't believe it was one of the reasons why I joined Bespoke Partners is I looked at private equity and where we were at in terms of talent as a lever to drive the investment thesis. And I believe we're truly at our infancy. I tell many, I remember back to the late 90s and a professor I had at Northwestern, Stephen Rogers, who had done two private equity transactions as an operator at the time. And he taught this course on entrepreneurial finance. And he talked about entrepreneurial finance in the context of private equity. And he would stand up in front of the class and say, do you bet on the horse or do you bet on the jockey? And he said, you bet on the jockey all day, every day. But I think if we look back to the late nineties and we talked to deal professionals within private equity, I think the true answer at that time was they were focused on proprietary deal flow and financial engineering to get their returns. And today, I think what we're seeing because of the internet, investment bankers, and other things that have matured the private equity industry, I think proprietary deal flow and financial engineering is harder and harder to come by as everyone has it. And so now we're really talking about that talent as the lever for private equity. And so when we think about that, Boone, tell me what that means to you. 100%, Eric. I come out of the venture world. And in the venture world, the talent and being able to really harness talent and optimize talent has always been a big part of value creation for startup. You need you need those brilliant, innovative people who are going to be breaking new ground and not afraid to really put themselves and their ideas out there and make that sort of stuff happen. And it, you're 100% correct. The main levers for private equity in the past have been financial engineering and finding proprietary deals. You know, financial engineering has always been about figuring out creative ways to cut costs and drive cost out of the business. And well, yes, that's always important. It's now table stakes right? It's everybody can do it. It's tried and true. And it's not a way to really produce outsized returns like you used to be able to with it. And then the proprietary deal flow, as you mentioned, being able to identify an undervalued asset that's out on the market is extremely hard because there is just so much capital flowing into private equity and so much dry powder that's looking for a home. And so it becomes really challenging to, to take advantage of either one of those. And what that really boils down to is it's the people that matter. If your, your value creation plan needs to be representing talent and the place of talent in growing companies and generating that value. So that that really is what I see as critical. And it's exactly why I was interested in, in joining Bespoke, because I've seen that earlier in my career and my, my venture startup days. It really truly is all about the people. And I think as we look at a talent strategy within our company, Bespoke Partners, or what we talk to within our private equity firms and how they look at it, I think it really boils down to a couple elements. I mean, I think the first one, right, is starting with a, a talent partner at the private equity firm that develops an integrated talent management strategy. And I think that the three levers within that that we really hit on, one is you've got to have the right team in the portfolio company, and, and that's the executive recruiting piece, which is near and dear to our heart, which we do very well. Within that, then you have to assess the organizational strength. And I think when we think about the organizational strength, it's not only those right players on the team, but it's the right processes that have been developed to achieve that value creation plan within that, whether it be a go-to-market lever, tech transformation lever, a cost efficiency lever, but really having the processes to drive that. And then the final one is organizational health. And, and that really gets down to the broader company and the culture within the company and whether people feel an affiliation with the company when they get up and go to work to, to give it their best effort every day. And so again, to recap, right, the right talent, organizational strength, which is really synonymous with the processes to achieve the value creation plan. And then the broader team, which is really their excitement or affiliation with the company to get up and go to work. Tell me a little bit about that, Boone, and, and your thoughts. Yeah. So a little bit of, of framing in the context here. I'm the chief marketing officer for the company. And when I got here a few years ago, one of the things that I just was overwhelmed by was the amazing data 
that the company had built out over the previous decade. Bespoke was very, very early to pursuing and understanding and recognizing the talent thesis for private equity. And when we were founded by Christy Nova over a decade ago, Christy was an early visionary in recognizing that talent would become the most important lever for value creation. And she really built the company around that. You know, our, our executive recruiting and leadership advisory is really all about addressing all three of those legs of the stool, if you will, that you mentioned, Eric. And so when I got here, I saw that, hey, we had placed more than a thousand executives in portfolio companies for leading private equity firms. These leaders had gone on to transform hundreds and hundreds of these portfolio companies. At our last tally that we did a couple of months ago, they had generated more than $130 billion in value for their PE sponsors, among them orchestrating 425 M&A. That's an amazing cross-section of the market an amazing cross-section of how talent plays such a critical role in that value creation equation that, that you're describing. And so a couple thoughts around the, the levers that you mentioned and the ways to think about this. Number one, without a doubt, finding the right leadership is central to that talent thesis. We help our clients identify the right scorecards and refine those scorecards to find the leaders that actually understand how to create value in the particular sector that they're in, the particular segment or vertical of the software industry, and then actually aligning with the investment thesis that those private equity firm sponsors have for the portfolio company. Then a key part of that is indeed the process. Before we move on from that, I think it's really important to, to go back to the data that you talked about, because one of the things that you and I gleaned very quickly when we got here was history tends to repeat itself. And yeah. so we studied part and parcel to the searches that we've done in the last 10 years. We actually studied the industry as a whole. And so one of the things that we can do, and I, I was in New York City last week with one of our clients that had a company under LOI, and we were sitting in their offices and we were talking about the current constructs of the executive leadership team at the $50 million point that the company was today. And because of the data we've collected in, in my experience, I was actually able to talk to them about, well, what is your value creation plan? So what are the levers that you're gonna use to take this company from 50 to 100 when you exit? But then I was able to match that up with our data and talk about the way that the executive leadership team was gonna need to transform over the next three to four years so that they could achieve their investment thesis and not only was that based on my experience, but it was based on the hardcore data that we generated in the history of private equity software. And I think that's a really important note that when yeah. you're talking to bespoke partners, you're talking to a firm that doesn't not only say they're data-driven, we actually have the data to back up how these executive teams transform. 100%, 100%. Like the talent report that we're discussing here today, you know, we, we actually have published four issues, four editions of this talent report this year, starting in January. And in each one of them, we drill into the talent thesis and structure and the way that talent actually supports those value creation plans, exactly like you're describing. So we detail things like compensation and what are the compensation levels for your leaders, your C-suite and your VP level leaders that you should be considering for a portfolio company. What are the turnover rates? So how often are CFOs turning over? How often are CPOs turning over? Those turnover rates are an indicator of market tightness and frankly, how expensive new leadership is going to be if you plan to replace a leader. Another very, very important aspect and one that we're asked about a lot is team composition. So specific to that example you're talking about, uh, if I'm at a $50 million portfolio company and my thesis is to grow it to $100 million, well, which roles do I need to be recruiting for? Which C-suite roles should have a, an experienced operator representing that function within the C-suite? Those are very critical questions to answer. They're essential to achieving the investment thesis. They're essential to optimizing your talent and really growing the way or, or creating value the way that the business should. And that's a big part of what we provide is that perspective, that benchmarking to our clients. And that's really what our talent report does. It, it captures these data points, explores these themes, and really provides our, our clients with an understanding of the overall state of talent at a given moment within the sector. I invite everybody who hasn't seen the talent report to scan the QR codes that we're showing during this video and download it, get a copy of it. You can get four editions of it now that we've published so far this year. Absolutely, and I think that's a critical point because that talent report arms our private equity clients and their portfolio companies with the data to get the right team in place. 
One of the things that I think is really important as we think about organizational strength and the key process to achieve the value creation plan, as well as organizational health, which is the, the overarching culture and the affiliation that the broader employee team feels to the portfolio company, is the chief people officer. And one of the things that I think about the right team, and I've been talking to a number of our private equity clients about this, and particularly their talent partners, in order for the talent partner to be effective and get beyond just the right executive team, but also get into core processes, which represents organizational strength and that culture, which represents organizational health, they need a peer in the portfolio company. And so many have often thought about people as human resources, the, the word human resource connotates staying out of trouble, having the right benefits and process. But what we're really talking about here today is not just the human resources element of the people, but truly a strategic people officer that has a seat at the table that can carry out plans, not only one to make sure the right talent's in place, but assess the talent's ability to put in the key processes and make sure that the culture stays on track and, and stays healthy through the process. Can you elaborate a little bit on that? Please? Yeah, yeah, it's it's all spot on. In fact, in this most recent edition of the talent report that just came out this month, we do a deep dive on this exact topic. We call it strategic talent management. And there are two really interesting developments, very interesting, important trends that illustrate what's going on with strategic talent management. Number one is the rise of talent focused professionals within the PE firms themselves or affiliated with the PE firms themselves that focus on optimizing talent across the portfolio. So the three years ago, when we started up and started gathering data and looking at the state of talent for the industry, we did this review of the top 50 private equity firms that invest in software and SaaS companies in the United States. So we did a review of them to look at the makeup of their personnel and staff. And at the time, around 25% had dedicated staff that was focused on talent optimization for the portfolio. So that is either an operating partner or some other senior person with operating experience who would focus on talent across the portfolio and helping the portfolio companies to optimize talent and really exercise it as part of the, the investment thesis. Or it could be an operating advisor or someone with a lot of operating experience, a full-time staffer who is focused on that. Okay, so 25% three years ago. Fast forward to today. And for this most recent edition of the Talent Report, we redid that review and we went back to those private equity firms to take a look at the talent structure and infrastructure today. And today it's at 84%. So 25% to 84%, 84% have staff that is dedicated to talent optimization and talent's role in value creation. So it's it's more than tripled and a very significant uplift. And that's a huge recognition that the role that talent plays in value creation and really achieving the investment thesis. But then exactly what you said, Eric. Well, I think, I think, I think Boone, you know, 84%. One of the cool things when you think about private equity software, Bespoke Partners has actually played a key role in recruiting a number of those leaders and actually helping these PE firms decide, discuss the remit within these strategic people leaders at uh, the, the private equity firms, which has been a really cool journey for us to be on, given how much we believe in this and how hard we've studied it. 100%. It's a recognition at the PE firm level and something that GPs out there have all seen as one of the most critical levers that they have for creating value and achieving the outsized returns. And we've been very honored to be part of that transformation within the PE firms themselves. It's been immensely rewarding and a big part of the recognition of talent in the industry today. But of course, the, the other part is what you referred to earlier, which is the rise of the chief people officer. Absolutely uh, agree with what you said earlier, sort of the, the traditional view of human resources as a department and a function within the typical company is one that's heavily administrative, meaning administering the many moving parts around employing lots of people and growing a company and recruiting new, new people and in all these different sort of sort of functions. All that stuff is mission critical, of course, right? It must happen, it must be achieved. But the change that we're seeing today is that now it is understood how strategic HR and talent and optimizing talent can be, right? How, how much that needs to be raised to a level of strategy and a discussion around strategy for the company as a whole. So the simplest way to illustrate this or to see that trend is the fact that now so many companies have people leaders in the C-suite. You rewind a few years ago and the idea of having a chief people officer our chief human resources officer was still relatively rare. You'd have these vice presidents or senior leaders, but not quite reaching the C-suite. That's changed. We now see in the data we presented in the most recent edition of our, our report, 
that in fact, it's the majority of companies, the portfolio companies we study, when they reach the 500 person headcount, they have a C-suite leader who is focused on talent and people exclusively. So a CHRO or a CPO in the C-suite. And if you look at that in terms of revenue, uh, it's a right around the $100 million per year mark that companies have someone in the C-suite that's focused on that. Now, of course, there are some that are much smaller than that, like ourselves, who are around the 100-person mark who have a CPO in, on our staff. And that's because of the strategic nature that we see the role playing in helping to achieve our own goals. That's an important point, Boone, because at the end of the day, if you're going to grow your business there are very few businesses that can grow without growing headcount. And when I think about the talent lever, attract, develop, retain, and belong, making sure that you have someone strategically looking after those four things is extremely important in the growth strategy because you wanna make sure one, that you're attracting the right people to the organization. And once you get those people in the organization, it's what are you doing to develop them, create a sense of belonging, and then ultimately end up retaining them. And I think it's really important to have someone look after that role. And so. What I'm gonna predict in the next four or five years is as we achieve our investment thesis and work very closely with these private equity firms is that 500 uh, employee number is actually going to lower significantly because of the strategic importance of the people underneath the investment thesis. I 100% agree with that. I think that it's still relatively new and, and an emerging imperative or emphasis for a lot of the, the leadership within these companies. And I 100% agree. I, I think if we fast forward another couple of years, it's going to be just a recognized universal need and, and part of strategy as it should be. I, I'll also mention that we did just recently launch our own practice around this. As anybody who's familiar with Bespoke knows that we orient our services around functional roles. So we have a, a CEO practice, a finance practice, go-to-market and tech and product leader practice. Well, we have just added a fifth practice that focuses on people and talent. And that's headed by our partner, Alex Bassetta, who's just a, a deeply experienced, fantastic partner at, at understanding this part of the investment thesis and the role that strategic talent management plays there. And this is a recent launch for us and something that, again, reflects the importance to our clients of these roles and making sure that you have seasoned talent driving the talent thesis within within these portfolio companies. No, I'm glad, glad you brought up the new practice because what we say we recently launched it, we've actually done over 50 chief people officer searches for private equity. And I think it's really important that we don't just put a flag on a practice. We actually do the hard work yes. to develop the expertise and the skills before launching that. And I think the key piece there is 50 chief people officer searches in private equity, because I think that's something that we're going to work on with the industry is recruiting HR professionals from you know the public markets or, or other areas of business is not the same as being a chief people officer within private equity. And, and that key distinction truly is understanding how to stand up these programs in a capital efficient manner and, and really having the financial literacy across the organization to understand the bottom line and how all of these talent decisions impact the bottom line because it's so important in, in the private equity world. 100%, totally, totally agree. And in fact, that's the reason, as you well know, that we hired our own chief people officer, uh, Julie Catalano, who has just been fantastic to work with. I use the old software industry slang that we eat our own dog food, meaning we practice what we preach. And the, the, the idea that comes from Microsoft originally is that you use your own products or you use your own philosophy, you use your own strategy. And, and we absolutely do that. We have our own chief people officer, and Julie's mission is to make sure that our team really does feel that they are part of the mission, that they are engaged, that they feel that sense of belonging. And I just have to say, it's personally been just wonderful and eye-opening for me how effective and how impactful that can be for a team that's on a mission like that. So uh, absolutely. And I think I talk about this all the time. Like the couple of the keys there is one, you, you have to you have to hire strategic minded people leader. You need to give them a seat at the table so that they actually can implement the strategies that are important. And part of that is a true understanding of the value creation plan. And then within that, when you think about transformation, transformation cannot happen overnight. Transformation needs to be a journey or a process that the organization can go along. And I think that's one of the mistakes that a lot of folks, when they transform entities is they transform them too fast, which is another risk within that. But I think those are really what I look at is the three keys when you do get that strategic people leader is 
one, make sure they have a strategic mind, two, make sure they have a, a seat at the table and understand the, the value creation plan, and then create a journey over several years where you're able to transform the entity into that strategic enterprise that will achieve that value creation lever. But, you know, Boone, it was a pleasure to talk to you here today about the rise of the chief people officer. I think it's going to be a trend that we continue to see going forward and excited to be on this journey with you. Absolutely. Thank you, Eric. 100%. It's something that's massively disrupting the industry. It's a major change and I think is going to become the strategic imperative for every private equity firm and portfolio company across the board. So thanks a lot for uh, taking the time to dive into it with me.